Hi, I am your trainer from Roby Group Telnet. The topic is LT protocols. LT protocols is one of the topic of LT fundamentals day one course, which is a part of four days LT radio network optimization training. The LT protocols will be covering SAE or LTE architecture, LT bearer service, quality of service, class identifiers in LTE, protocol stack for control plane and user plane. Also, it will be covering X2 control and user plane, the protocol interaction, and UE protocol stack. SAE or LTE. SAE stands for System Architecture Evolution. System Architecture Evolution is the network architecture and designed to simplify the network to other IP-based communications network. SAE uses an E node B and access gateway and remove the RNC and SGN send from equivalent 3G network architecture. To make a simpler mobile network, SAE also includes entities to allow full interworking with other related wireless technologies. The evolved UTRAN, which consists of E node B, providing the evolved UTRAN user plane and control plane terminations towards the UE. The E node Bs are interconnected with each other by means of X2 interface. It is assumed that there always exists an X2 interface between the E node Bs that needed to communicate with each other. In case there is a problem with X2 interface, then the E node Bs will communicate with each other through S1 interface. Here the EU train composed of the E node B and the UEs which it serves connects with the serving gateway through S1 U interface and with the MME through S1 C interface. S1 C is the control plane of S1 interface and S1 U is the user plane interface. The serving gateway and MME communicate with each other through S11 interface and the MME uses S6A interface to communicate with HSS for authentication of users in LT network. The serving gateway connects with the PDN gateway through S5 interface and the PDN gateway is also connected with the external IP service provider through SGI interface. SAE LT bearer service. We have the EU train which consists of UE and E node B and we have the evolved packet core which consists of serving gateway and packet gateway. Here we can see that the UE connects with the peer entity and this is called the end to end service. Between the UE and the packet gateway or PDN gateway is the EPS bearer. An EPS bearer uniquely identify traffic flows that receive a common quality service treatment between a UE and PDN gateway. PDN gateway stands for packet data network gateway. An EPS bearer carries traffic between UE and PDN gateway using an enhanced radio access bearer which is called ERAB between the UE and serving gateway and an S5S8 bearer between the serving gateway and the PDN gateway. There are two types of EPS bearers in LTE. Whenever a user is connected to the LTE network, if it is using the network or not using the network. If it is not using the network and it is in the connection state, it will be assigned an IP address. So that bearer is called the default bearer when it receives its IP address. 
The bearer has no defined quality of service and is maintained until the UE is switched off or it goes out of the LT coverage area. Then we have the dedicated bearer. The dedicated bearer is established by the network to allow the flow of traffic between the UE and the PGW. The quality of service used for this bearer will depend on the type of traffic carried. For example, there are different quality of services for different type of traffics. If you have a background, interactive, streaming or conversational service, you will be using different quality of service for each type of traffic. And it is maintained until the data has been transferred. A radio bearer transports the packets of EPS bearer between the E node B and the UE. Similarly, we have the S1 bearer which transports the packets of an EPS bearer between an E node B and a serving gateway. Also from a PDN gateway we have an external bearer which connects the PGW to the peer entity. Quality of service class identifiers. In the previous slide we talked about the quality of service. Here we have the QCI from 1 to 9. The bearer type can be either GBR or non-GBR. GBR stands for Guaranteed Bit Trade. It means that the bit trade will be guaranteed for that service and the resources would be available for the specific service which is the GBR service. Non-GBR it means when the resources will be available it would be provided for that specific type of service otherwise it will be shared between the users in the gbr service we have the conversational voice or ip service which is of the priority 2 and a packet delay of 100 millisecond in the non gbr service we have the ims signaling which is having the highest priority by priority we means that based on the priority of the service the scheduling will be done. It means based on the priority in the LT network, the services will be processed. Here we have the application example. We have the conversational voice or IP, conversational video, live streaming, non conversational video, real time gaming. All of these are of guaranteed bit rate bearer type with different requirement of packet delay and packet lost and have different priority. In the known GBR we have the IMS signaling, voice, video, interactive games, video, for instance buffer streaming, TCP apps, web, email, FTP, all these are known guaranteed bit rate. These are the packet lost of these services and here we have the priorities. Protocol stack control plane. In the protocol stack control plane between the UE and the MME we have the NAS. The NAS is the abbreviation of known access stratum which forms the highest stratum of the control plane between the UE and the MME at the radio interface. It supports the session management procedure to establish and maintain IP connectivity between the UE and the PDN gateway. It supports the mobility of the user equipment. NAS security is an additional function of the NAS providing in services to the NAS protocol, for example, integrity protection and ciphering of NAS signaling messages. Then we have the RRC. After the RRC, we have the PDCP, which is the packet data convergence protocol, which performs IP header compression and decompression of IP packets to form the application layer. Then we have the radio leak control protocol. 
the radio room control protocol supports acknowledge mode transfer of the user data between the ue and e node b then we have the mac layer which is the medium access layer the medium access control layer is responsible for hybrid arc retransmission request hark is used for error correction and retransmission then we have the priority handling transport format selection of l1 data that is carried by the lta interface between ue and the e node b here the e node b we have the relay function between the rc which is the s1 ap protocol between the e node b and the mme similarly the pdcp is the sctp protocol at the e node b side between the e node b and the mme then we have the ip layer internet protocol then we have the layer 2 and the layer 1 between the e node b and the mme the medium here between the ue and the e node b is the radio interface while the medium here between the e node b and the mme can be either the microwave or it can be the fiber connectivity between the e node b and the mme which will form the layer 1 then we have the layer 2 and ip layer then sctp and s1 ap between the e node b and the mme now we have the protocol stack user plane before we talked about the protocol stack control plane now we have the protocol stack user plane the difference between both of them is that here first we had the nas signaling the nas non exchange stratum which was used to communicate between the ue and the mme but in first here we have the application layer then we have the ip layer then we have the pdcp rlc mac l1 similarly we have here at the e node b the pdcp rlc mac and l1 as discussed earlier pdcp performs robust header compression rlc maps the eu tran bearer to the logical channels and perform segmentation in sequence delivery and retransmission the mac protocol here maps the logical channel to the transport channels and is responsible for hark and scheduling the physical layer maps the transport channel onto physical channel and performs channel coding or modulation etc here also like before like the control plane that we used discuss just like in the last slide the e node b act as a relay between the pdcp and gtpu gtpu is a gprs tunneling protocol user gtpu packets are carried by the udp which is the user datagram protocol over the ip protocol which is the internet protocol which is carried by the layer 2 and layer 1 between the e node b and the serving gateway and between the serving gateway and the pgw so the same protocols are used over here between the serving gateway and pgw and the same protocols are used between the e node b and the serving gateway to carry user data the application layer interacts with the peer entity which is the external isp provider and here we have the we have the ip layer between the ue and the pdn gateway so this ip layer messages are not processed and the application layer messages are not processed by the e node b or the serving gateway and they are transparently sent to the peer entity here or the pdn gateway x2 and user plane here we have two diagrams one is the x2c and one is the x2u the protocol stack over here is used uh, for x2c which is the x2 control plane and this is for the x2 user plane 
the x2 supports forwarding data and intra lt handover user plane data is carried on x2 interface when the data forwarding at intra lt handover feature is used this packet forwarding drastically reduces the risk for tcp fallback into slow start due to handover as no packets are lost this means that the throughput of the user won't be reduced during the intra lt handover when this specific feature of data forwarding will be used so the x2 interface will help for the data forwarding between the two e node b's x2 interface is between e node b's which help to support different functions like handover first we have in the control plane we have the x2 ap protocol which is carried on the sctp protocol then on the ip and layer 2 and layer 1 in x2 u we have the gprs tunneling protocol which is carried on to user datagram protocol and then which is carried on the ip layer and then layer 2 and layer 1 In this picture we can see the EU train and the ECP and the different functions that are performed by the E node B and the ECP the E node B perform inter cell radio resource management it also control the resource block it provide function of connection mobility control which was in the 3G network is done by the RNC since there is no RNC in the LTE network so these functions are done by the e node b then we have the radio admission control e node b measurement configuration and provision and we have the dynamic resource allocation which is the scheduler it is this is done in both uplink and downlink the mme provides the nas security it also provides idle state mobility handling eps bearer control the serving gateway works as a mobility anchoring what does this mean when the handover is done between the two e node b's through x2 interface when x2 interface is not supported or either the x2 interface is uh, broken or uh, the, there is a problem with the x2 interface then the handover is always done by the s1 interface and the serving gateway provide the mobility anchoring function for the handover between the two e node b's then we have the pgw provides the function of user ip address allocation so all the ip addresses assigned to the user is through the pgw it also provides the function of packet filtering and it also provide a connectivity with the external internet which is the isp protocol interaction here we have the ip packets which are to be sent to the ue now these ip packet which is the user information the pdcp protocol maps the eps bearer onto the eu train radio bearer and perform robot header compression the rlc maps the eu train radio bearer to a logical channel and perform segmentation in sequence delivery and retransmission the mac protocol maps the logical channel to our transport channel and is responsible for hark which is used for error correction and scheduling it also performs the multiplexing then we have the physical layer which does the coding the demodulation then antenna and resource mapping is done by the physical layer then the e node b sends through the antenna the information on the physical channels which is received by the ue and here the reverse process starts the first one is antenna and resource d mapping then the demodulation does here we have the modulation and here we have the demodulation the coding is done by the physical layer of the e node b and the decoding will be done by the physical layer of the ue then the hybrid arc is a mechanism that is used for the error connection between the e node b and the ue on the radio interface then we will have the mac b multiplexing and here we have the arc or assembly done by the rlc layer and then the pdcp layer what it does it does the deciphering 
here the siphoning was done and here the de-siphoning is done here the adder compression was done here the adder decompression was done and then the IP packets are finally usable for any application that we are using on our UE user protocol stack first at the user side the UE side we have the NAS the NAS is used for session management mobility management and NAS security then we have the RRC layer the RRC radio resource control it uh, does the system information acquisition RRC connection between the UE and the E node B it receives the paging messages the, the paging reception is done by the RRC layer also the resource block management is done by RRC AS security cell selection will cell to be selected connected mode mobility and measurement reporting all is done by RRC here we have the application and the IP application is the application that the UE is using it can be web browsing or web streaming any application it is using for the data then we have the IP layer and the information is sent to the PDCP for header compression here the information is sent to the PDCP layer for integrity or ciphering then here we at the RLC we have uh, different modes for the transfer of RRC messages and user data using acknowledge mode transparent mode or unacknowledged mode error correction then here are at the MAC layer we have the RA control and HAG control so the HAG is used for error correction then the information is mapped onto the physical layer and is transmitted Here we have the protocol model as discussed in the last slide we have first have the application layer then the IP layer the information from the application layer is called the payload for each layer SDU the service data unit which is the payload plus the protocol header is called PDU so the information that we receive from the application layer is called service data unit which is the information that is required to be sent then at each layer the header is attached and it becomes the PDU then that after the application layer the IP layer the header is attached it becomes the PDU and for this layer it becomes the SDU of the above layer and then the header is attached of the PDCP and then the radio link layer the header is again attached and then the MAC layer another header is attached and then layer 1 so the other information is attached and that is transmitted on the radio channels also in this picture you can see first we had the payload which is a service data unit then the header is attached then it becomes a PDU and then uh, this is the SDU and then header is attached it becomes a PDU and then total information block size is increased so this is how this is how the protocol model works that was the end of the LT protocols topic now we will begin with the planning and dimensioning topic which is the last topic of the day one thanks for learning